suggesting, well, a pretty soft start. James, it's been a pretty flat week for the Australian market so far, but it does look like today's performance is going to see the Australian market close in the red for the week. If we have a look at the leads, the US market down by 0.7%, and we really saw those growth areas being sold off quite heavily. That's the material space, the industrial space, as well as the financial space. As you mentioned, initial jobless claims are coming in ahead of expectations, 348,000. But there are concerns that perhaps the job market in the US right now is really driven by a lower uh, participation rate more than anything and if we have a look at our commodities we saw them being sold off quite heavily as well in fact copper prices were down by 2.1 percent gold prices actually outperformed but still down by 0.5 percent during the session and oil prices down by almost two percent so it does look like it's going to be a hard day for our miners this of course is all on the back of global manufacturing numbers and it really started in Asia yesterday where we saw the Chinese PMI numbers for miners and we saw a reading lower than expected coming in at 48.1 that was the fifth month of contractions and there were some hopes that we could break above 50 seeing that February's numbers were actually the highest that we've seen in China's manufacturing uh, numbers those uh, flash PMI numbers in four months but of course we got reads out from Europe and the big one was Germany the strength and the backbone of the eurozone and we saw a very weak read there 48.1 the market was expecting to see a read of 51 so instead of showing expansion in that manufacturing sector the numbers suggesting contraction we saw the same from the eurozone those numbers coming in below forecast at a reading of 47.7 the market was expecting 49.5 so once again global growth concerns dominating trade and unfortunately that's going to be a negative for the Aussie market it looks like the material space uh, looks to be he heavily sold off today yeah also a negative obviously for the local currency the Aussie dollar again getting a little bit of a touch-up holding below that 104 US cent mark Look at your outlook short term for the Australian dollar and the impact on the market. I mean, people obviously, I don't know, they take it almost personally when you see it getting being down a little bit. But I'm sure a lot of those companies uh, exporting a lot of offshore earnings would be thinking, well, about bloody time. One of the constraints of the Australian share market performance has been that very high Australian dollar because we are an exporting uh, nation and if we have a look at the composition of the Aussie market, well most of our market is the materials and the financial space and certainly uh, that lower Aussie dollar is usually good news for commodities as long as we don't see the commodity <laughs> prices falling in tandem like we have. We have a look at the Aussie dollar though, near two month lows and if we have a look at the Aussie in the last 60, uh, 60 days, this is what it looks like and you can see just how sharp mm. that fall has been. Been. It is good news for a lot of those stocks which have their revenue offshore or exposure to the currency. Stocks like Billabong, News Corporation, Amcor, QB Insurance, Cochlear, uh, Brambles. There's a whole host of Australian companies which do make the majority of their offshore. Of course, when the Aussie dollar is rising, these stocks face a pretty big headwind. But as the Aussie dollar is falling, it is good news. Stocks like Orica, which with a one cent move in the Aussie dollar against the US currency, they're looking at a $3 million move in terms of profitability. And if we have a look at ResMed, well, we know that gross margins are impacted uh, by the currency move because 70% of their costs are in Aussie dollars and the other 30% in Singapore dollars. Uh, CSL generates about 90% of its revenue offshore as well. So that, high, uh, that, that lower Aussie dollar, good for all these companies. But of course, the flip side of it is that the lower Aussie dollar is also usually um, a barometer of global growth expectations and also commodity prices. And unfortunately, it's not only the Aussie dollar that's fallen overnight we're seeing a pretty sharp fall in commodity prices especially those copper prices down by 2.1 percent so that material space is expected to be hit despite some of the positive implications from that uh, lower Aussie dollar and Julia look it's been a big week for the retailers in terms of getting their numbers premier investments this morning uh, coming out with their report card uh, on year profit down about 2.4 percent um, considering the backdrop a, a decent result James, I think this is a pretty good result given the retailing environment at the moment. Premier has actually managed to come out with a pretty solid result coming in at $38.5 million for the half year and also the dividend coming in ahead of our expectations at 18 cents. Of course, when you are comparing it to the last corresponding period, you need to consider that the last corresponding period was an extremely weak one and that's because of the impact of the floods on uh, the retailers. And if we have a look at Premier Investments, they have seven key brands, Just Jeans, J 
JJ's, Portman's, uh, Dotty, uh, we've got Peter Alexander, as well as Jackie Ian Smiggles. And if we have a look at most of their brands, it is targeted towards that youth market. And this has been a very difficult space because we're seeing youth unemployment rising quite sharply uh, compared to the unemployment uh, numbers that we've seen for the whole population. So it is a difficult time, especially with a suite of brands like this. However, it does look like uh, Premier Investments has been dealing with some of the structural challenges quite well. They do have a presence online for all seven of their brands and their online business has seen growth of a hundred percent not only that their expansion into Asia seems to be working well if we have a look at Smiggle as a business five out of the ten top performing stores are actually in Singapore so they'll be looking at expanding that strategy into Singapore this is a company, Premier Investments, which has a lot of cash, $303 million. So I guess one of the things that the market was watching for was a possible buyback. We've really seen no signs of that today. So I guess the other thing that they could be using this cash for is earnings per share accretive acquisitions. We're seeing some attractive valuations in the marketplace. So I guess that's one thing that the market's going to be keeping an eye out for. But in terms of guidance, they've kept it unchanged. Their EBIT guidance was 80 to $95 million. They have said that they are expecting uh, EBIT's coming on the lower end of that expe expectation, so around the $80 million mark rather than the $95 million mark. Now, of course, in the week that David Jones got absolutely punished on the market after what was a dismal outlook for the, for the retail, of course, Premier uh, Investments retail CEO is Mark McInnes, the, the ex-David Jones CEO. Would he be quietly sitting back thinking, yep, yeah, I'm the man with the Midas touch? Well, I guess it'd be sitting back and perhaps uh, making some inroads in terms of the challenges that David Jones itself is facing at the moment. That's some of the structural challenges in terms of online. And I guess most retailers are really scrambling uh, to get their online strategy in play. And they are a little bit behind the curve, especially in comparison to their international peers. The Aussie dollar is starting to fall and we're seeing uh, interest rate cuts here in Australia. So that should be a positive for the retailers. But it's very hard to pick a cyclical bottom for the retailers retailers especially when they're undergoing these structural challenges as well so the retailing space a very hard space this week especially with David Jones Kathmandu uh, coming out with their results but of course the big winners this week have been any investors or traders uh, short selling those retailers they would have had a big smile on their faces